What's up guys, it's your boy, Barca boy 103 today we're going to be doing the match preview for Deportivo Alaves versus Barcelona in La Liga. We're going to have a little bit of a break coming up soon, but again, the games have been coming in thick and fast over recent weeks, and we're back in action away from home yet again, only two home games this year in 2024 absolutely crazy nonetheless though it's against Alaves difficult opponent especially in the stadium as well recent history doesn't really favor us but again it's a game that we need to win especially with the other big matches happening near the top of the table this weekend but before we get into it make sure you guys smash that like button down below let's try to get the 200 likes this video be very much appreciated and also if you're new make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't already and let's get into it Kickoff time for this match will be taking place at 6.30 p.m. local time. So we do have the early kickoff again a bit earlier than usual, but not, you know, the ridiculously early kickoff time. And this match will be taking place at the Mendizerota Stadium, of course, the home of Deportivo Alaves. And the referee for this match has also been confirmed. On the pitch, it will be Juan Martinez Muniera, and on the VR, it will be Mario Lopez. Let's start off by taking a look at the league table where Barcelona are currently sat in 4th place in La Liga on 47 points. After playing 22 matches, we have 14 wins, 5 draws, and 3 losses. You look at our last 5 games in the league, 4 wins and 1 loss. Not the best re recent record, exact same recent record as our second, our, you know, 3rd place uh, opposition in Atletico Madrid. And they also have 47 points. They are ahead of us based on goal difference. Girona on 55 points. We're currently, what, quick math. 8 points off them as well. Then, of course, 10 points off Real Madrid in first place on 57 points. So, 10 points off the top, 8 points off the bare minimum target, which, of course, is to finish in second place. But this weekend, there is a potential lifeline for Barcelona because if you take a look at the top teams and who they'll be facing this weekend, firstly, Girona will be hosting Real Sociedad, difficult game, but with it being at the Montilivi, it may give Girona a bit of an advantage, but it won't be a walk in the park. But it is the Madrid derby this weekend, Real Madrid versus Atletico Madrid at the Santiago Bernabeu. Regardless of the result of this game, it will benefit Barcelona. Real Madrid will drop points, Atletico Madrid will drop points, or they will both drop points, of course, if it ends up being a draw. I'll tell you this for free. Real Madrid will win this game 100%. I will bet my entire mortgage on it. I know they're having a bit of a center-back issue. Chua Mendy suspended for the game. Ruger came off a big blow against Getafe. I will tell you for free. Real Madrid will win this game. So with Atletico Madrid, in my opinion, it's meant to be dropping points. We can now jump a leapfrog ahead of them and cement that spot. In third place, we'll wait and see if Real Sociedad can pull off an upset, maybe get a draw, something like that. So we can really reduce the point difference this weekend. But again, of course, we have to do our own job, which is to beat Alavez. I believe we play against Alavez, and then Genoa will face Sociedad. Then the next day on Sunday, Real Madrid will be playing Atletico Madrid. So we do play first, push the pressure, of course, on everyone else. And again, we can narrow that point, maybe even to five. If Genoa lose and Atletico Madrid lose, we go to 50 points. Again, everything. we're not at a point in the season where... Everything is just now completely done. Of course, league title, forget about it. But second place, I think, is still definitely a possibility. There is a bit of an opening. Again, we still have to play Real Madrid at the Bernabeu. We still have to play Girona at the Montilivi. We still have to face Atletico Madrid at the Wanda. So it's not dead in the waters quite yet. But of course, with our recent form, you can pretty much say it is. But again, there is a gap opening up here. A big opportunity here for Barcelona if, of course, they can get the result that they need. Now, if you take a look at our opponents in Deportivo Alaves and where they're currently standing in the league table, they are currently sat in 11th place in La Liga on 26 points. After playing 22 matches, they have 7 wins, 5 draws, 10 losses. You look at their last 5 games in the league, 3 wins, 1 loss, 1 draw. For a newly promoted side coming into the league and sitting around the mid-table, honestly, is probably good for their expectations as well. I think so far in the season, for what their level is, they're having a pretty good season. Let's now take a look at our opponents in Deportivo Alavés. Like I just mentioned so far this season, for their expectations, they're having a pretty good season. Now, the last time we did face them, of course, was earlier on the season at the Montjuic Stadium, where Barcelona barely, and I mean barely, won the game by two goals to one. Their striker, Samu, got the goal in the first minute as we were conceding a lot of goals during that time in the first minute of the game. Uh, second half, Lewandowski brace ended up giving us uh, the three points. I remember this game very, very well. We were absolutely shite in the first half. Of course, Kunde and Aruha, you can see there, lined up with Aruha right back. Chavi then switched it. Kunde got the assist for Lewandowski. We were begging Chavi to switch them in game during the game as well. 
My god, it was a ropey game. I think the second one for Lewandowski was a penalty as well. Clear penalty, but you know, takes it in consideration. So we did struggle a lot in the first meeting against Alaves this season. That has to be taken to note going into this match. Now, if you look at Alaves' last six matches in all competition, in the last match, they beat Almaria 3-0, they beat Cadez 1-0, they lost Athletic Club in the round 16 of the Copa del Rey 2-0 at the MMS, they then uh, beat Sevilla 3-2 at the Ramos Natchez Peach 1, they beat Betis 1-0 in the cup to upset them, and they also drew 1-1 with Sociedad, at the Anahueta. So very, very good results in their last six games. Of course, besides being knocked out of the cup, of course, MMS, we got knocked out there by the same, you know, difference of goals by two. If you look at the last two games, no goals conceded as well. So again, for their expectations, I think they're having a very, very strong season. So let's take a look around the last three matches in all competition. Firstly, the 2 0 loss against Athletic Club in the cup. I mean, we know the story, we know how difficult it is, and of course, Alaves failed the test as well. Athletic Club are absolutely all over them. Again, 7MS in the cup is just a different level of stadium, it's a different Athletic Club team as well. They had absolutely no chance. If we had no chance going into that game, of course, Alaves couldn't stand a chance, end up losing 2 0. I wouldn't say. They uh, put up a fight, so to speak. They made it difficult, especially in the first half. But once uh, Al Athletic Club got that first goal, it was basically curtains from that point. Next game is their 1-0 win against Cadez at home. Now, you could say Cadez and Alavez are kind of on the same level of team in terms of personnel. And again, it was not a dominant performance, but more so a professional performance from them. They did score uh, via a penalty, of course, but it was still a vintage Alavez performance. Very strong in defense. Uh, Cadez didn't really have that many chances in the game as well. And a very deserving three points for Alavez in this game. Their final match in all competition was a 3-0 win away against El Maria, who, of course, worst team in the league, have not even won a game this season yet so far. Dominant performance again from their striker, Samu Afrandu. Keep in mind, is on loan from Atletico Madrid. So Atletico Madrid next season are going to have Depay, Griezmann, Morata, Correa, and they're adding Samu to that as well. Crazy, crazy scenes, but it's a vintage Samu performance. Very, very clinical on the day. I don't think LFS played particularly well, but they were just really, really strong up front, and Almaria had no way to combat that, and a very deserved, again, three points for LFS coming out of this game. So overall, final thoughts on Alaves. I would say they're very much a professional team in the sense their job is to go out there and they get three points. They don't care. They have to play pretty, play dirty, park the bus, uh, jam it off a penalty and one nil win, whatever the case may be. Their manager is, of course, Luis Garcia, who got them promoted last season as well. But it's a very, very good brand of football, especially when you come to the teams that are, the, you know, similar level or lower level than Alaves. Against the bigger size, he has struggled this season. Of course, we remember the game against Madrid where they barely... Uh, uh, got away with it, and he saw his reaction, of course, rage on the sideline. I think it was a ninth minute uh, winner from Madrid. I think it was before the Christmas break. It was before some break, if I'm not mistaken. But again, the experience is there with him. In terms of plays to look out for, again, just Samu, their striker up front. Of course, the uh, bald guy, I forget his name as well. He always balls up against us. It's it's very, very annoying, but it has to be Samuel their striker. Very, very clinical, of course, scored in the uh, first game of the season against Alaves and Barcelona at the Monge Week as well. Do not give him any space. Again, this is the game where you definitely want Arujo at center back because you need someone there to make it difficult for him to bully him in the air, on the ground as well. But again, Alaves, especially at home, they're a team that can cause some damage. They, of course, knocked out Betis from the cup at home as well. They're a team that, especially on the counterattack, they can be deadly. Of course, Haji on the wings has always been threatening with his dribbling ability as well for Barcelona again though it's a very simple game plan which hopefully we can execute and that is to dominate and nullify the opponent's midfield if we can do that I think this game will be you know pretty much cruise control but with us not having a natural you know DM it does make it difficult we have no real ball winner no energy in that midfield and that's where Alaves will want to you know pounce on Barcelona for that so we'll see how things turn out but Alaves's game plan for this game will be very simple of course park the bus a little bit then really hit Barcelona strong on the counterattack, and if they're clinical up front it's going to cause us some serious problems now in terms of some news in regards to the squad fitness of barcelona we are expecting indigo martinez to get the green light and travel for this game of course the squad list hasn't come out yet it will come out in a few hours before the before barcelona travel to alaves later tonight or maybe earlier in the morning but xavi did confirm after the match against osasuna on wednesday that cancelo Arujo 
and Lemin Yamal received some knocks during that game, but they're not injured and they will be, of course, available for the game tomorrow against Alaves. So keep that in mind. Arujo, Cancelo, and Lemin Yamal coming into this game with knocks, but again, nothing too serious to prevent them from playing. We'll wait and see if Inigo Martinez gets a green light for this game. If not, worst case scenario, he'll be back for Canada next weekend. But again, it's going to be a very interesting to see how Chavez looks his lineup based on this game. We are coming up to a one week break now as well. There won't be any midweek games next week. Finally, the team can have somewhat of a recuperation and rest but going to this game of course is going to be very very interesting and also decisive to see what Chavi selects. Time now to get into Chavi's press conference reaction. This press conference this morning of course has a lot of questions in the media about the current form of the squad injury crisis of course him resigning and some quotes from Laporta with an interview that he did with Raccoon this morning so let's get and see what Chavi had to say this morning in the press conference. Starts off by saying that tomorrow's match will be complicated. Elephants are coming from a very positive dynamic with three straight wins, but we need the three points. We've analyzed our match calendar with our staff and no team in Europe has had a calendar like ours. We've had bad fortune with injuries and also unfortunate situations that have harmed us. It's not because of the medical staff is what he's trying to say. Uh, I, read the, I read in the media that I'm leaving because of the press and the mental fatigue, but the reality is expectations that have not been met and I simply believe the club needs a change of scenery. So of course, this, the media have been saying that, oh, Chavi's uh, tired, the pressure's getting to him, and Chavi's saying, no, I just not going to meet expectations, and that's why I have stepped down, of course, when what was going on this season. Chavi's been saying a lot, especially October, November time, if we don't meet the standards, I'll be the first one to walk out. And he's backing that up. I don't like that they pressurize referees every single week. I support Laporta's words, of course, on Real Madrid and the refereeing scandals of of late. I saw coaches here winning the Champions League, but unsure whether they will continue or not. Of course, referring to Pep Guardiola and Luis Enrique. Maybe a bit of Frank Rijkaard uh, back in 06. On the refereeing issue, Chavi said, I'm not the president of the RFEF or La Liga. I'm surprised that they are allowing this. Of course, the pressurizing referees when Madrid, on th uh, Madrid TV go and just absolutely destroy every single referee that they come up against it's you know really weird it completely affects the competition week in week out even a blind man can see it as immunity said we are not fools everyone outside of spain values our work football and people professionals everyone but here it is not valued. I hope to do a good job from now until the end of the season. Then as on Victor Roque, of course, scoring goal. Can he start the game? There are reports suggesting that Victor Roque could start. Chavi said that he's coming from a long injury and has improved his physical condition. The goal will allow to free himself, but we have to go little by little because he still needs some more minutes. I'm not tired of football or of us. I'm very well football in my life and passion. It's just we haven't evolved as a team and locked continuity in our game. The other day, I was talking to a Restate, the Osasuna manager, and he told me, I enjoy my job from Monday to Fridays. Of course, the weekend gets quite intense and games and stuff like that, so that makes sense. And Chavi told him that, well, not for me. I barely enjoy it. The process of being a Barcelona coach is not worth it. I will say this on that quote. Chavi needs, look, I love, love Chavi. He is my third favorite player of all time, my favorite midfielder of all time. He needs to calm the F down. I mean, the amount of moaning he is doing over the recent press conferences. I get the I get the media asking him the question, but bloody hell, he's sounding like a five-year-old. The pressure. Oh, I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. You're, you're not putting more more pressure on the new manager coming in, because I guarantee you, the first question the, man, the new manager will be asked in his opening press conference, Chavi left because of the media pressure. Are you worried about that? Bookmark it. He needs to, you know, you made your point. I understand it. The job is difficult, of course. What job is easy? You're being paid a lot of money. I'm not getting, I'm not going in on Chavi here, but tranquilo, Travi. Tra tranquilo. You don't need to, you know, hold in on the fact that the Barcelona job is impossible. We understand that, and that's my thoughts on that quote. Uh, Chavi continues on by saying that after leaving, I'll continue to go to the Monju Week and the Spotify camp now as a Barcelona fan, of course. Then he's asked on Lewandowski. Now, Lewandowski has come out in the media doing some interviews, basically saying that he's tired as F. And that, you know, he's noticed that his level has dropped off as he gets older. Surprise, surprise. And Chavi said that Lewandowski is exemplary. He trains hard. He uh, he asked me how he can help the team. What he says is what he feels physically. It's true that with his age, the spark is less. And that's why you have to be smarter. And he's open to improving. Lewandowski would say they all... Uh, the game feels different. I'm falling out of love with it a little bit. This mother effort is on 300k a week next season. Got a bit of the summer. Laporta... Make your make your magic deco. You've got to bend Lewandowski this summer, or worst case scenario, half his wages. Not even half. I would say cut his wages by seventy percent. This man cannot go into next season on three hundred thousand euros a week, falling out of love with the game, body getting weaker. 
Get that out of here. Absolutely get that out of here. Now, finally, Chavi was talking about the injury crisis, so to speak. He said that we try to prevent injuries from physical data from the GPS. One day, we could call for the Federation to have one more day, but it's complicated. The calendar has affected us in the month of January. Chavi stabbed in an analysis saying that uh, Barcelona played the most games out of, you know, your top five leagues, 10 games in January. I think if you count the end of December, beginning of February right now, we're looking at 14 games in the space of like 35 days is, which is ridiculous to be fair and that's why the injuries have been coming in again like i mentioned on the channel i think in the last press conference and i'll say it again like 65 percent of the injuries that we've, we've suffered for are not on the medical staff i think the one of fran torres definitely could look at those hamstring injuries maybe the one of uh, rafinha against osasuna inigo coming back and doing his other hamstring after securing uh, his right hamstring a bit weird but you know tristeg is not on the medical staff alonso's on the medical staff Gabby isn't on the medical staff, so I understand his point, of course, defending his team, but the injury concern at Barcelona is a big, big problem in everyone's opinion, pretty much. And that concluded Xavi's press conference reaction had the match against Alaves tomorrow. Let's now get into the lineup prediction. We're going to start with the manager, of course, Xavi Hernandez. I'm going to try my best to predict his lineup. I think it will be a 50-50 lineup per day. It's either going to be, you know, fully strength or he's going to make some rotation, again, with us having a... Uh, no game next week during the middle of the week. We're going to go into, you know, a one-week rest. So, Tavi can take some risk here and there. There are players, of course, who are having uh, knocks against uh, Osasuna. We heard, you know, La Yamal, Arujo, also Cancelo all had knocks. So, we're going to be seen on that front. But I think Tavi will go with this lineup on the screen right now. He'll go with the Naki Pena in goal. A back four of Kunde, Arujo, Christensen, and Juan Cancelo. Midfield three of Dion, Gundogan, and Pedri. And a front three of La Yamal, Lewandowski. And Fermin Lopez kind of as a false swinger, maybe a midfield four with a front two. In a sense, I think Chavi will go with full strength. I think Chavi's job, I think his like mindset will be go out there, get the result, and then of course rest afterwards after the hour mark. If we have you know somewhat of a decent lead, maybe one nil, two nil, whatever the case may be. I would be very, very shocked if Chavi makes any rotation. I think Victor Roque is knocking on the door. He got a goal, of course, against Osasuna. Laman Yamal does have a knock. Will he start Victor Roque? I'm not quite too sure. Apart from that. I don't see anyone else getting in. Romeo in the midfield, forget about it. You could maybe see Kobarsi come in, but you need Aruho to come back. Samu, the striker. I think Christian now has recovered a little bit from his knock. He should be fine. We could maybe see Hector Fort, like for either Kunde or Juan Cancelo, who again, Juan Cancelo does have a bit of a knock as well. Apart from maybe Hector Fort, Kobarsi, and Victor Roque, I don't see anyone else getting into this team. And honestly speaking, from this lineup, maybe barring one change, I think this will be the general consensus of what the lineup will be in tomorrow's match. But that's not I think that Chavi Hernandez will select for this match. But of course, in the comments down below, let me know what you think Chavi will go with. Now I'm going to show you guys my lineup, what I would do if I was the Barcelona coach. And I have made a few changes from Chavi's lineup selection. I have gone with this lineup on the screen right now. I've gone for Astrolaga in goal. I'm sticking to my guns to drop an Pena. A back four, Hector Ford, Christensen, Kubarsi, and Juan Cancelo. Midfield three of Casado, Gundogan, and Pedri. And a front three of Victor Roque, Robert Lewandowski, and Fermin Lopez. Again, my main uh, priority of this game was to make some rotation to rest some key players. You're probably thinking, oh, why are you benching Aruho when you said Aru you need Aruho to combat Samu? I do agree with that. I would definitely consider bringing on Aruho in this game, but I would not start off with him. I think Christian does have the ability to at least win those ground duels against Samu and when it comes to the air. I'm taking a gamble if I'm being honest. We got, you know, Champions League in two or three weeks, which pretty much is going to be riding or dying on our season. I want to at least get past Napoli. If we lose in the quarterfinals, whatever, but I want to at least get past Napoli in the round 16. Uh, Kunde, way, way too many minutes. Hector Ford comes in. I actually want to see Hector Ford perform at right back. In the midfield three, You've got to rest one of them. Gundogan, Frankie, and Pedri are playing week in, week out. That midfield isn't really even that balanced anymore. You've got to bring someone in. You think I'm bringing in Romeo? Hell no. I've got Cosado coming in for Frankie de Jong. In the front three, Lemany Mal has a knock. Pfft, enough for me. Get him on the bench. And I brought in Victor Roque. This probably look more so of a 4-4-2 in-game with Lewandowski and Victor Roque as a strike partnership. I wouldn't necessarily play Victor Roque on the right wing, so to speak. But I think this team can definitely get uh, a result against Alaves. It's a bit of a risk. I definitely think you get a result, and that's be the lineup that I was left for this match. But of course, in the comments down below, let me know if you'd rather pick my lineup or Chavi's lineup. Time now for my score prediction. What do I believe the result will be in this match? I have gone with Barcelona winning this game by two goals to one. I think it'll be a narrow victory where we play like crap, but get away with it. 
in the end. That's how I see this game going. I think Chavi's lab selection will be absolutely crucial. Will he make some rotation, go full strength? That would definitely be a massive deciding factor. But I think Barcelona now are coming off a win and clean sheet midweek. You know, Chavi's resigned. Will we see a bigger reaction away from home? Again, our away form this season has been all right. If you take away, uh, you know, Saudi in terms of a neutral ground, I think away in Spain this season, we've only lost to um, Athletic Club in the Copa del Rey. So something to be, uh, you know, proud of, I would say. But this is not going to be an easy game. I think more so because Barcelona will make it difficult for themselves. But I do see us getting over the line. I think we have to. I mean, with the Madrid derby being this weekend, you've got to be in a position to capitalize on one of the Madrid teams who will definitely drop points maybe even both will remain to be seen but i have gone personally win this game by two goals to one but of course in the comments down below let me know what you think the score line will be so that was my match preview for Deportivo Alaves versus Barcelona in La Liga. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and of course leave me your thoughts down below in the comments on everything we discussed. The main thing first of course is your thoughts on the score prediction. And secondly, on the lineups, first you were to pick my lineup or Chavi's lineup. What do you think Chavi would go with? What would you go with you, the manager? Leave me all your thoughts down below. And of course, make sure you guys subscribe down below as well if you haven't already. And I will see you guys tomorrow for the live watch along set the reminder on the screen and come and join me watch the game with me follow share for the match buy my match reviews i'll see you guys tomorrow definitely a moment here where we can really turn the season up on its head if we don't capitalize on that this season is you know even more dead than it already is in my opinion but i'll see you guys tomorrow and hopefully barcelona can get the job done take care and force a barca <laughs>